Steve. So we are a week away from the NFL draft and the Falcons enter this draft with a very intriguing pick. Um, some people have said it's the most interesting pick in the draft. Some people have said the draft starts in Atlanta. So a week away, if I had to ask you what direction you think the Falcons are headed, what would you say? Tough call. I, I mean, I mean, they're, they're in. <laughs> And here's why I say that, because it's not going to be the most interesting pick. The most interesting pick is going to happen right before them with the 49ers, mm -hmm. because we hear, we keep, we've heard Mac Jones for weeks now. But remember, no one started talk, was talking about Mac Jones as a top five pick until the Niners traded up to three. Right. I've spoken to some people over the past couple of days. I don't think they have a direct science of it because the Niners are playing it close to the vest. We don't think it's going to be Mac Jones. They don't think that they gave up all that freight for it to be Mac Jones. So let's say it's Trey Lance. That's the name you hear more so than Mac Jones and or than, than uh, Justin Fields and they're talking about that pick. So if they go Trey Lance, then that's an option off the board for the Falcons. Mac Jones, people I've talked to, he's not an option at four for the Falcons. That That's someone, if he's not picked at three, who could you could see slip. So is it Justin Fields? Maybe Kyle Pitts. From everything I gather, it's more so Kyle Pitts. And it's not just because he's someone who could give them an immediate impact. And I, I can tell you this, the Falcons are looking for immediate impact out of some of their rookies because some of their contract and salary situations, they've got to have some rookies play right away, you know, especially if they feel they drafted well. But because that position now, that hybrid tight end position has become so important in the NFL with defense getting more athletic, defense is playing nickel and dime, packages 70 to 80 percent of the time if you've got someone like Pitts who can run like a wide receiver block like a tight end and do some things at ace back again think of George Kittle mm -hmm. right maybe a more athletic George Kittle mm -hmm. that opens up the field for you and yes Matt Ryan may only have one or two or three more years in him um, that's not a bad option to have as a quarterback with one or two or three more years in him um, so I think if you get a Kyle Pitts you can address some other positions. If they know they're going to get a, uh, an edge rusher and some, some defensive front help elsewhere in the draft, maybe second round. Let's not forget the Falcons have the fourth pick in the second round. That Maybe that's where you get a quarterback, Kyle Trask, a Kellen Mond, someone like that. They've got to add a quarterback, Kelsey. They've only got one on the roster right now, <laughs> that being Matt Ryan. So it, it'll be intriguing. So I, 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 I would lean more towards Kyle Pitts unless a team comes up to trade. So that's a good segue point for us. So let's talk about the trade situation here, because when you look at the quarterback needy teams, it's Washington, Chicago, New England. Um, those are the three off the top of my head. Um, how do you balance? You have the number four overall pick and this, this Falcon season was going for it, you know, poorly towards the end and it, you know there was a large part of the fan base that just wanted a, a good draft pick so how do you balance say one of those teams that's a far way to it's trade big, it's big, out yep. and I know the king's ransom that you would get for the future but you were banking on that fourth overall pick I guess it's just like it's such an interesting predicament because you want to like you said get an impact player but are you going to get that if you trade to 15 where New England is? Yeah, I, I can't see the Falcons trading back that far. And a lot of people I've talked to in the NFL don't see it. Because like I said, the, the Pages are at 15. I think the Bears are at 20, 20 somewhere. Yeah, yeah and yeah. Washington's right around th that mark. I mean, that's a – yes, you can get bodies. And, yes, that's probably where some of these edge rushers mm -hmm. will be. Yeah. Right? So if, if that's the emphasis you want to put – I get it. Plus, you can get probably first round picks for the future, mm -hmm. which let's say next year, um, if you do decide to part ways with Matt Ryan, you've got now an ex, you know, extra draft equity mm -hmm. to trade back up. Right. Oh, that's you're, 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 you're continuing, but you're continuing to kind of cut, 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 cut to do that. And I think the Falcons trade back, it probably would not be out of the top 10. It, it probably maybe 11, maybe, but I, I still don't see it because if the teams are coming up to four, 
they're not necessarily coming up for that quarterback. Some, some of those teams are coming up for Kyle Pitts. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't know if the Falcons would say, we're going to forsake Kyle Pitts to move back six slots and allow a team like a Dallas or allow a team like the Giants, whomever, to take right. Kyle Pitts. Right. Well, and, you know, Arthur Smith was at Kyle Pitts' pro day, and Kyle Pitts has been out and saying that he's had a lot of conversations with the Falcons. But here's one that I wanted to get your opinion on, and I tweeted this yesterday. What about Penne Sewell at four? What do you think about that? It, it's an option. He's a great player. Mm -hmm. A great player. Remember, he was an opt-out last year. He's one of the mm -hmm. opt-out guys yeah. Um, yeah. who didn't play. But just mm -hmm. a dynamic tackle. If you need him to play guard, again, super athletic, super tough. I That wouldn't stun me, Kelsey, because if you look at Arthur Smith and if you look at Terry Fontenot and the way those teams were built, the Saints and the Titans. Offensive line. Just massive, tough offensive mm -hmm. lines, right? You know, you think, you know, the Saints getting guys like, Teron Armstead. He wasn't. It wasn't a first round pick, but just some of the some of the offensive linemen that they linemen that they had, and then the Titans invested a ton. You know, they they had Taylor Lewan, Lewan. And Jack yeah. Conklin, both yeah. first round draft picks to tackle. They went out and paid big money for Roger Saffold to guard. Mm -hmm. So it would it wouldn't stun me if that's the way they went. It, it, that it would that would not surprise me at all. I think it would. Surprise some folks, you know, coming after them in the draft because then Kyle Pitts is going to be available. And uh, okay, then what do the what do the Bengals do? Mm -hmm. Maybe they trade back a slot. Maybe they trade back a little bit if somebody wants to come up and get a Kyle Pitts. So that would be an interesting domino. I still think it is going to be somebody who's going to be putting up stats in in Kyle Pitts, or someone will be putting up stats in a quarterback for the future. Okay. A, fan, a, a fantasy football picket for if the <laughs> Oh, it's so funny because if, if we're just trying to understand for the past couple of years, it's been a very needs based draft in Atlanta. And so the adjustment of the thought Kyle Pitts is like crazy because you're like, yeah, Julio Jones, Hayden Hurst, Calvin Ridley, like. Do you need another weapon? Because if Matt Ryan's on his back the whole time and they can't run the ball, it doesn't matter what weapons you have. But then you remind yourself, Terry Fontenot wants to take the best player available. Is Kyle Pitts the best player available over Penny Sewell? It's just like a crazy mind game. <laughs> okay. Let me let me get let me get really, let's hit the BPA thing first. The okay. best player let's available. Hit it. Let's hit it. <laughs> it is a myth. It is, it is, it is GM, it is GM cliche, right? We have coach speak. This is GM speak. <laughs> when you are drafting in the top seven or eight, you are drafting for need, right? The Jaguars are drafting Trevor Lawrence because they need a quarterback. Right. The Jets are driving Zach, drafting Zach, Zach Wilson because they need a quarterback. The Niners are drafting a quarterback because Jimmy Garoppolo, one, doesn't stay on the field. Mm -hmm. We saw what happened last year because, and two, they're going to move off of him after the season. That is a need based thing. So mm -hmm. you say they don't they don't need a tight end. Well, you look at you look at the, the successful successful offenses today, especially with the schemes that Arthur Smith runs. They need that second tight end, especially a hybrid type. The really good tight ends, the Gronks, um, Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle. Mm -hmm. Some of these teams that do that they've got the hybrid dual threat tight ends it opens up the offense again this football is now a game of geometry of space and angles mm -hmm. and if you've got a bigger piece in that geometry game who can run like a smaller piece like a pitch that really helps you out a lot so again this best player available thing when you're <laughs> when you're drafting in the top seven or eight i mean come on best player available happens when a cd lamb drops in the Cowboys lap last year at 17. It's in the Calvin Ridley for the Falcons in 2018. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's a really good point. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up. All right. So to close it out, you're, you're headed in the Kyle Pitts direction a week away from the draft. Do you, do you think you'll change your mind and go, go the, the quarterback route? Because, uh, I, I guess it'll, it just depends on what the 49ers do, right? If they do Trey it Lance, could. Justin Fields, I agree with you. I don't think it, it'll be Mac Jones to the Falcons, but it'll be interesting to see if 
the 49ers don't take Justin Fields and he's sitting there, what they do. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the Falcons are saying, hey, our pick's going to be predicated on the Niners. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the Falcons have done their homework on all these quarterbacks, right? Right. And let's say there's one that they do really like. All of a sudden, you're like, okay, well, he's off the board now. So let's go to a – let's trust our board. Kyle Pitts is the guy we really liked. So that quarterback option is off. So Kyle Pitts is going to be our guy. Or let's say – um, the Lions from seven call and say, hey, look, we're trading up because we want to get a quarterback. We'll give you our seven next year's number one. You say, huh, it's the Lions. If they're trading for quarterback now, they could be picking top 10 next year. We're going to make the move. See, this is another reason why you don't trade back to 15 with the Patriots because they could be picking at 15 or 18 next year. Right. Or with Washington because they could be picking in the same slots next year. You mm-hmm. You know, that's another thing to factor in. You look at the team's roster, who you're trading with, and if they could be picking top 10, then you make the move. So you have to examine that. That's why, you know, we. this is when things get very, very serious, and there, and there will be trades. There's going to be some teams coming up, some teams sliding back. Who will those teams be? And, there will um, be, and there will be a quarterback that falls. It happens every year. Yeah. Yeah. And look, and those, and those guys were looking at the second-round quarterbacks, the Kellen Mons, the Kyle Trask, the Davis Mills. One of those guys could slide up into the second round. Let's not forget that high second round pick that the Falcons have is a lovely second round pick. If you want to come up and get one of those guys, or if you want to come up and get an edge rusher or one of these offensive linemen who could be sitting there, you come up and get it, mm-hmm. you know, or that's a nice chip to have on day two. Right. Could also be used on a running back. You forgot to name that as one of the multiple positions that the Falcons you know what? You know, need I, to they're, address. They're, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're going to add that. I do not see that in the second round. Mike okay. Davis is a better player than people give him credit for, even though because they should know that because he ran all the Falcons <laughs> last year. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I don't see that coming in the in the second round either. I think that's where, you know, well maybe. I mean, second round is usually where running backs go, but they they've got to get some help on the defensive front. Mm-hmm. Remember, Dean Pease is coming in. Yep. We're going to say you know he's going to run an odd front, thirty four front. But again, teams are only in base defense less than thirty percent of the time, so it's not a huge measure anymore to get 34 personnel as opposed to the 43 personnel the Falcons run. They've just got to get some big physical players. And that's one thing to keep in mind in this draft too, Kelsey, they want to get bigger. Mm -hmm. This is a defense, especially that was built on speed. They Mm -hmm. want to get bigger and more physical. So look for some of those types of players to to be slotted in when they, when they draft the best player available. (laughs) 